This is, uh, when it's finished later this year, this will be the largest wind farm in the state of Kansas. I think specifically, it's hoping to say we can make Kansas better, faster, stronger. Leadership Kansas is the second oldest statewide leadership program in the country. The leadership program was put in place because the state recognized and the Chamber of Commerce recognized in order to grow the state, we needed to grow our leaders. Amy Blankenbiller is not only the president of the Kansas Chamber of Commerce, she's also a classmate. It's a program that says in order to be a state that can lead change, lead dialogue, affect um, communities in a very positive fashion, that we want to take a program that is positive, that addresses challenges head on, but does so in a respectful manner. Each year, the program selects just 40 people to take part. Well, oddly, what Leadership Kansas is not is a leadership development program. What we do is take people that have been identified as leaders in their local communities from all four corners of the state, bring them together, and bring them around the state to talk about the timeliest of topics with the best presenters. Uh, essentially, access to people and places where the ordinary person can't get to. These leaders come from all walks of life. Some are CEOs of major corporations. Others are small business owners. They're also lawmakers, members of the military, mayors, executive directors of charities, and district attorneys. We try to select a class that has balance, that's representative of the state of Kansas, both in uh, geography, occupation, uh, gender, race. Uh, experience, leadership experience, community, either the formal kind or the informal kind, the paid or the unpaid kind. Um, folks that have already had some experience in what they're doing and they want to enhance that through a program like this. So you bring together this variety of sectors that wouldn't communicate necessarily, build relationships necessarily, it bridges gaps, and then you're able to educate them all with the same types of information and the same opportunities to ask questions. How many opportunities do you get to travel around the state as a, as a professional and experience things with other people that you might not ordinarily have anything in common with, but by the end of the day, you're really not a class of 40, you're, you're a class of one came up with some conclusions and that they would build a third church and that they would acquire the materials. Having that diversity allows these participants to learn from each other as well. In addition to expert presenters, everyone in the class has their own unique perspective to offer as well. Sometimes you learn more from just the questions they ask. You get an opportunity to hang out with people that may share different political views than you, uh, may be in just opposite industries than you are. Um, and plus, you know, the experience of meeting people from different parts of the state. Charles Branson is one of the participants in this year's class. During the next six months, these 40 people will log hundreds of miles traveling across the state together. They'll visit places like Wichita, Kansas City, Topeka, Garden City, Holcomb, El Dorado, Lawrence, Hayes, Manhattan, Junction City, Pittsburgh, Coffeyville, and Colby. So it's taking you out of your normal element, putting you out in a new area of the state of Kansas, really spending some in-depth time analyzing what's going on in that community, learning what the folks in that community are dealing with. Participants spend three days in each of these places to get a first-hand look at critical issues and how those issues affect the state as a whole. It's way more complicated when you think um, compared to driving through. Drive through on I-70 at 70 miles an hour and you have no idea of how the people are still essentially pioneering on the plains. I think a lot of the knowledge that we have is preconceived notions about different parts of the state, but when you're exposed to the actual people in that community and you get to talk face-to-face uh, -face with them on the job, at the dairy plant, at the meat processing plant, and get to see these folks and interact with, I walked away with an incredible appreciation for what's taking place in this state and what people are really doing to make this a better state to live. Three days may not sound like a lot of time, but those days are jam-packed from sunup to sundown. Breakfast starts promptly at 7.30 in the morning, and class members rarely return to the hotel before 10 o'clock at night. Some classmates choose to continue discussing those issues long into the night. 
During the three days they spend in each city, they'll tour the main industries, both small and big businesses, to help them understand what supports the economy. Visit tourist destinations to understand what draws people to visit the area. They'll meet with experts and politicians who will enlighten them on what unique challenges each community faces. And they'll get the opportunity to tour facilities that just aren't open to the public. So this is the hatch off the Apollo 13 spacecraft, and if you want kind of bent down, you can get an idea. Try and lift from that side a little bit. Oh my gosh, that's heavy. How heavy it is, so. so. I can't. I can't so. lift it. It's not just the places each class visits, it's the wide range of topics they discuss. Do I think discuss. That China or anybody should be building coal plants without an eye toward carbon capture and sequestration at this point in history? You know, no. Classmates hear presentations from recognized experts from a variety of fields. I don't know if that's true or not, but that was something that we heard discussed. And then you couple it with the higher rates. To me, those are three things that don't connect. Um, everything from energy to our industry to our state to government and partnerships and the people. Topics also include education, agriculture, public policy, medical care, economics, development, business, and social health. Uh, but now it's very clear to me that if, if Plainville doesn't have a hospital, then they don't have some of their industries. In other words, these leaders get the information you just don't hear on the news or read about in the papers. We want to take a program that is positive that addresses challenges head on, but does so in a respectful manner, that cha addresses conflict issues that arise either in policy development, the media, or through just um, public awareness. Learning what works and what doesn't in each community also gives some of these participants ideas on what they can adapt and use in their locations as well. What you get from that investment of time is uh, invaluable, meaning it's something you can bring back and immediately apply back to not only what you're doing professionally, civically, community, um, but it's a wonderful education. While all of these LK members are already involved in their communities, this program is designed to inspire and motivate them to become even more involved in business, social, and statewide organizations that will not only make Kansas the best place in America to do business, but the best place to live as well. It's a great opportunity to learn about where you live, work, and play. And uh, if you want to make a difference in the state, if you want to have an opportunity to learn something about your neighbors, this is it. The thing that everyone has in common, everyone's optimistic and positive about making a difference. So you immediately have this group of people that also are well connected with other people that share that same optimism and desire to do something more in the communities and in the state that they live in. And I think our assignment is to take this information and be a better, smarter person to bring your community along. Um, keep the links together of people you met in Kansas and, uh, and use them for good. It's not just about learning, it's about friendships. Over the six months of this course, members of this class become extremely close. Each of them will spend hours together on buses that drive them to and from each location. They also take part in team building exercises like this one. That one-on-one -on -one time gives them a great way to expand their networking capabilities and gives them access to experts in a number of different fields they can turn to for advice. The contacts and the network that you have of individuals now that you can collaborate with, not just beyond the six-month class. It's a lifetime of collaboration. When we go out back into our real lives, there is a person that we can pick up the phone, we can call. I don't know anybody who's, um, who's, who's as smart on the Kansas economy, government um, sectors as someone who's been through Leadership Kansas. It's a tremendous network of good people in the state of Kansas in all four corners of the state, and you all have a goal, which is to take this this knowledge that a lot of people behind the scenes are working on and go make Kansas a better place. Being a member of the class of 2007, and are you having a good time? You can draw on the expertise of more than just those who are in your class. Once you graduate, you join a very powerful fraternity of LK alumni. Program Chairman Brad Stratton was in the class of 2003. What was your experience with Leadership Kansas like? Uh, Unforgettable. 
how has your perception of Kansas changed through this? I grew up in Kansas. Um, I'm from Lawrence, and I think, as we've heard with many of the participants, we all had an idea that we thought we knew the state. Being in the community and seeing it through the eyes of the community, they allow us as participants to just see a completely different dynamic and dimension of those communities. And so from my perception, I thought Kansas, I don't want to say was smaller, but I just didn't realize just how many opportunities, events, activities, um, how much history was here. I had more of a cursory view of that. You know, we're, we're living it through the eyes of the people who cherish these communities. And so that has been really, really positive. Um, you know, I find myself thinking differently about different issues that have been presented across the state of Kansas. Classmate Charles Branson has been a Kansan all of his life. He was born in Hutchinson and now lives in Lawrence. I thought I knew a lot about the state. You know, being from the south central part of the state, then going to the northeast part of the state, I thought, you know, I've got a pretty good idea of what this state's about. But I didn't. You know, it's, it's really amazing how little you truly know about the state. So that's just truly the amazing thing about it is no matter how much you think you know, you're going to learn some, something new. I think after the first couple of sessions, you figure out, I really don't know everything, and what am I going to do? What, what am I going to give back as opposed to what's in it for me? What am I going to give back? Because I'm not sure I know as much as I thought I did. One of the things that we have to do is Kansas is. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking you, Kansas is what? Wow, that was a tough one for our, for our group. We did it after the first session. But I think if anything, Kansas is resilient. And Kansas people find a way to get stuff done regardless of the industry in, they're in, the education they have, um, the number of people they have or don't have, and the resources they have or don't have. And instead of just identifying how we're different, I think the core of this is showing how we're the same. And this program is intended to show that together we're stronger, and together we have more that we can draw from, and we've had similar experiences that can help us address one or the other in different areas of the state.